Hi, I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors, and today's project is this really sad campaign chest. Um, I have such a soft spot for campaign furniture that no matter what I see, I always like to go get it. My husband was like, why are we picking this up? Every single drawer had problems. I was missing some of the drawer tracks. Um, none of them fit in correctly. So as you'll see later, I had some problems with the drawers but I have a really hard time saying no. So you can see it has some really crazy paint. One of the drawers was wood. So I decided just to dive in and see what I could find. I always like to start by taking the hardware off. And in this case, I wanted to test it to see if it was brass or not. So I used the magnet on my phone case. And if it's not magnetic, then more than likely it actually is brass. So I can polish those up later and make them look beautiful. I'm gonna move on and take all of the brass accents off of the corners as well. So obviously when they had painted this, they did not even take the brass accents off. So anytime you're painting something, just take them off, just pry them off with a five in one little tool or a putty knife, just get underneath there and take it off. Don't paint over brass hardware, please. You'll see in this project, I actually used three different strippers because I was really low. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna use this up. This is citrus strip and I'm using it on the top. Now I used to use this years ago and it worked really well, but they changed the formula and honestly, it just doesn't work as well. So I do go ahead and cover it with some plastic wrap. I'm gonna let it do its thing. And then I'm gonna come back with a putty knife and start scraping it off. I'm going to use some acetone to work on getting the rest of that stripper residue off. It is a paint remover, so it's really great to use on paint. You can see there wasn't any even primer used. So this is literally, I'm not even sure what kind of paint this was, but it just really soaked into that wood and almost was like a dye, but I know it was some type of a paint. The red paint really just didn't want to come off and it's almost like it just stained the wood. I think partly maybe because no primer was put on, I'm not sure, but that red just went really deep into the wood grain. So for the next side, I'm using QCS and it's by Stripwell. And uh, you spray it on, you wait 15 minutes, and then you spray another layer on, and then you can come back and scrape it. Now you see I'm using my carbide scraper here and it actually comes off really good. You can see this stripper worked really well. As I pulled all the paint off though, there's a lot of damage to this wood. And so there's all these little swirl marks. Somebody must have used really low grit of sandpaper and created all these swirl marks. So it's not in very good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on sanding it and just see how much of the paint I can get out of the wood grain.
I'm going to use some J-Weld and I'm going to get this drawer guide re-adhered. It has come off. So it's a two-part system. You just mix it together and you apply it. And it's a really strong adhesive. Okay, stripper number three, this is Blue Bear, their soy gel. And um, just like it says, it's a little jelly substance. So I put it on um, and then I'm just scraping it back off. Um, this works pretty good too. Um, I think if you use it in combination with a carbide scraper, it works even better than with a putty knife, but it was coming off pretty good too. So I wanted to pause and um, explain a little pivot I have decided on. So this piece is not like a precious antique. This is, it is all wood, but it's, there's no maker's mark. There's nothing super special about it. And it's gonna take a lot of work because they didn't even prime it this red has seeped down into the wood. So I had a little conversation with myself over the weekend and I was like, Lisa, why are you trying to get this to wood when it would look beautiful painted out? And so, you know, as a furniture flipper, you have to also look at the kind of the business side of things. Um, is it worth your time? Because, you know, you, you, you need to factor in the amount of money that you're going to charge for your time. Is it $30 an hour, $35, $40 an hour? That's like what I kind of like to charge per hour to do something. So can I resell this and make up all of the hours that I'm putting into it? Probably not because it's going to take a really long time to try to bleach it, sand it, and it's just really not worth it. And so, you know, I'm doing another campaign and it's a Henry Dawn, completely worth it because the resale value is there for that one. So that one I did completely strip down and restain it. This piece, I'm just not gonna do it. Um, it just doesn't make good economic sense. So I know some people would probably disagree with me, but you know, if you're in the business of furniture flipping, you need to look at all of the aspects. You need to look at your time, your supplies, you need to look at the piece, you need to see what kind of resale value it has, and then you need to back into it deciding what, what kind of technique should I do with this piece. So I hope that makes sense. I know some of you would not understand, um, but that's kind of my thought process sometimes on furniture flipping. I hope it helps. There was still some paint on the inside of some of the drawers, so I'm using acetone just to get off and clean all those drawers up on the interior so that it looks nice before I go and prime and paint it. I'm gonna give it a good scuff sand to prepare the drawers and the dresser for priming and painting. There is some damage around the base of the chest. So I have decided I'm going to go ahead and take off the base. The front piece cup just unscrews. And then for the sides, I'm gonna go ahead and tape them off and I'm gonna use my circular saw and I'm just going to trim them off. You know, my little speech earlier about being 
conscious of how much you can make on a flip, I guess I should have heeded my own advice because, um, you know, as I was editing this, I'm thinking, you know, I'm putting a custom base on this and um, that's a lot of work, And but I did it anyway. And so I have a hard time. I need to listen to myself and heed my own advice because, you know, this is not a very high price point piece. There's no maker's mark. Um, it's definitely more of a rescue than a profitable flip, but... I don't know. Sometimes I just can't help myself. So now I'm ready to prime and paint. I am using Ben 123. This is their water-based primer. I'm just going to use a paintbrush and I'm going to use a roller and I'm just going to roll this out. Um, you can get a really good finish uh, with a brush and a roll. I like to use Purdy paint brushes. I also like to use Zebra's paint brushes. Those are both really good quality. As far as the rollers go, I like to use a microfiber roller and a very thin nap. I've also used mohair and I've used velour. But honestly, I really like the microfiber the best. My preferred method is I always go around the perimeter first and then I fill in the interior and then at the end you'll see I'll come back and I'll do nice long strokes and I'll even everything out. And if you're using a quality paint it will self level. The dresser had some distressing marks on it, and so I'm just going to use some Bondo wood filler to go in and just fill those in. I like to do one coat of primer and then if I need to come back and do any fills that's when I do my fill and then I'll do a second coat of primer and then I'll be ready to move on to paint. I'm going to spray the first coat here. This is my Home Right sprayer. This is Tricorn Black by Sherwin Williams, the beautiful black. And you'll see I'll come back in later and I will do some um, brush and rollering as well because I have to do touch ups.
I usually soak my hardware in boiled water and vinegar for a little bit, and then I'll come back with some Barkeeper's Friend and a very light abrasive, and I'll just go in and polish up that hardware. Now I'm ready to create a base. So I have picked up some lumber from Lowe's and I'm going to go in, I'm just gonna create a base. So I'm trying to determine how long I want my legs. So I want them four inches or five inches. I believe I went ahead and went with five inches. So I picked up this Craig Crosscut system. So if you do not have a miter saw, this is a really cool system. And it basically turns your circular saw into a miter saw. So initially, my, my circular saw won't cut to the depth of this. And so I had to end up using miter box to cut the rest of it. Later on, I, I kind of had an idea. I thought, okay, well, what if I propped up my wood a little bit? And then that allowed me to cut it fully through. But the depth on my um, Ryobi, my circular saw there, I think it's only like, I can only cut wood that's about to remember i think it was one and three fourths and this is a two you know this is a two inch block so i had to use my miter box to cut the rest of the way so that's not ideal um, but if i moved it up if i had like a little um, piece of wood underneath it that popped it up that would help me get the depth that i needed so i'm just creating some blocks for each corner and then i'm going to cut a one by four to fit in between those then i'll screw them together and then i will attach it to the bottom of the dresser with some pocket holes. This is the Craig pocket hole jig and I've used it several times. It works really well. Um, it's all laid out in the instructions. So I'm creating holes that will actually be drilled down into the dresser. And then I'm creating some side holes where it's gonna actually drill into the feet. So I had to really just make sure I was drilling the right way. So you gotta make sure that those pocket holes are going the right direction. So they're gonna be drilled down into the dresser. On another project, I drilled them the wrong way. So you just want to make sure you kind of have everything laid out. Sometimes I would go over to the piece and just kind of put it on there. I'm a visual person. So just make sure that I have everything lined up correctly.
So I'm going to go ahead and do a dry fit, see how it's looking. My measurements are looking really good. Um, and now I'm ready to actually glue it down. And then I'm going to screw in the pocket holes and adhere it to the base of the dresser. When I lifted it up, did a little dad shake on it just to make sure it was secure and it works. Success. I still need to fill the gap in between the dresser and the new base. So I'm going to use Minwax uh, wood filler and this is a dark walnut. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there. Um, it was getting kind of messy. So I decided to pull out one of my wood glue syringes and I thought this is a liquid. I could put this in my syringe. So I just pulled it out and put it in the syringe and was able to get into those really tight areas without making such a big mess. I decided to go ahead and stain the base instead of painting it out. And so I'm just going to do a little slip coat with some mineral spirits and then I'm going to stain it with a black finish. To get it really black, I had to end up doing about three coats of the stain, but it's just a little bit of a variance, but just enough that it kind of sets it apart from the black chest. Okay, so now I'm ready to work on the drawers. I had so many problems with the drawers. You saw in the beginning how shot they were. So I had to go ahead and replace one of the center, you know, one of the drawer guides on one of the drawers. So I ordered that, got it cut, got it adhered, got it glued up, and I still had the drawer wooden shut.
I put it back in and it still doesn't work. So I pull it back out and I'm gonna make a few more adjustments just to make sure that it's plumb. It still doesn't work. So I was like, okay, what is going on underneath here? And so what I noticed was my new replacement was too far up. And so I needed to cut it back. It was too close to the front of the drawer. So I'm measuring the lip there on the drawer and I'm just gonna cut off some of that center drawer guide. And that was it, that made the difference. But unfortunately, the second drawer was giving me problems as well. So I pull it out and I kind of just thought, well, okay, let's double check that all of my measurements are correct. Again, I'm making sure that everything is centered, plumb, what's the deal? Still not working. I'm looking underneath it again, maybe there's something I'm missing. So I pull it out, put it back in, make a few more adjustments, still nothing. The top drawer was fitting in okay, but it was sticking just a tad. So I thought, well, let me switch them and see how that does. Well, the second one fit much better in the top and there was no sticking at all. But the problem was is that drawer still wasn't fitting. So I tried all of my little tricks. There's a lot that I didn't even have time to show, but at the end of the day, nothing works. So I sanded down the top. So because of that, I decided, you know what? I'm not gonna repaint that because I don't wanna add extra product to this, the top and the sides of the drawers because that's just gonna, I didn't want it to stick. So what I decided to do after I had it all sanded down to raw is I decided to use the stain. And so the black stain, I did a few coats of that and it just seeped right into the wood and matched perfectly. So that way there's not gonna be any problem with drawers sticking. After all those adjustments, I needed to come back and do some touch-ups. So you see, these were my favorite. If you wanna know my favorite rollers, Stallmeister, they are the best. Um, they're, you have to order them online, or if you have a Fusion mineral paint distributor in your area, um, Fusion will carry them. So they are fabulous, they're very thin and they go on. I, I use them for all kinds of paint, but you can see it provides a beautiful finish. So as a final touch, I decided, why don't we go ahead and gild the feet? Because, well, why not? So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm using Posh Chalk, pigments mixed with their infuser. This is pale gold. I'm using painter's tape. I'm applying it. I apply another one and then I take off the first one and that provides a perfect measurement. And I'm just going to mix those two things together and I'm going to paint it on. And I just paint a couple coats on and it provides a beautiful low luster gold. Once everything dried, I'm gonna go ahead and use Osmo's PolyX oil and I'm going to seal it all up. You can see there, it, it was really the key for this because it's uh, the black with the stain was a little dull on the right, but as I put the oil in, it really helps the uh, base blend in beautifully with the paint because they're both more of a satin sheen. And so I think it was a critical little piece there was to blend those sheens together.
So let's look back at the before. This little chest definitely needed some help. It was very sad. And this was not, I will tell you up front, this was not a profitable flip. This was a rescue. I probably spent 10 to 12 hours on this little chest with all the problems I had with it and then all the extra things I did with it. So definitely not profitable. Um, but it was fun. And I think we took it from a really sad piece to a bit more of a statement. So here's the after. Isn't that good? I know. The base turned out so good. I know I didn't need to gild the feet, but I'd already spent so much time. I thought, why not? Let's just add a little bit of gold. Here's some behind the scenes on how I shoot some of my staging photos. I use a moving blanket along with my tripod to get some of my moving shots. You can see I'm just holding the camera and I'm just squatting up and down to get some of these moving shots. It's funny what you can do. Just get creative and just use what you have to make some of the fun little shots. I told you this was more of a rescue. And one of my dear friends messaged me and said, oh, this is one of my favorite pieces that you've done. And I was like, really? I said, well, I would love to gift it to you. Her and her husband had been such a blessing to our family when we walked through some really trying times a few years ago. And so it was a really awesome thing to be able to gift it to her. So tell me what you think. Do you like this style? Will you try this base? Let me know.